I was always used to seeing water all around me, and when it invaded the alleyways, I liked to paddle in it in my navy blue boots. At that time, it seemed magical. The palace was besieged by water, and the ground floor seemed to have become an indoor swimming pool. Joining those images of the great flood at five years old came emotion and states of mind which became contradictory at times as I grew older, living peacefully while the world seemed to be gripped in a phase of exponential acceleration, walking in the same places and doing some of the same things that even my most distant ancestor had once done, I felt time passed so slowly and often stood still altogether. This was at odds with the idea, the actual reality, that in Venice we were living in a place on the verge of catastrophe, realizing that if the tide was to rise just ten centimeters more, while a strong southern wind came up, we might all be flooded completely. After that great flood of 1966 that had submerged the entire city, the air raid sirens of World War II had been dusted off and put into operation to warn people of the arrival of another high tide, defined by that year's standard as exceptional. As I grew up, the exceptional tides happened more and more often and became normal through the years. They were always a real party for me. Often stuck at home, as soon as I heard sirens, I went to the window to watch the tide rising slowly to its peak. That was the perfect time to jump on my bicycle, my passport to freedom, passing over and through the flooded alleyways. It was great fun to scoot through the water, like diving a speedboat at high speed, spraying fountains of water everywhere. Some years after that unforgettable flood, an English ambassador convened the first private international committee for safeguarding the monuments of Venice. Italy, not to be outdone, and to perhaps thinking of Moses saving his people from the waters of the Red Sea, embarked on a huge project of mobile dikes to stem the exceptional tides. I spent a couple of years working on the Mose. Modulo Sperimentale Elettromeccanico, Electromechanical Experimental Module. But unfortunately, every two years, the completion of the works was regularly postponed for a further two years, regular as clockwork. Fifty years have passed since the far-off November, a completion of Mose is still regularly pushed forward. The dikes are already rotting, and sometimes work, sometimes don't. It seems to be a lottery. From my childhood, flooding became more frequent, but little changed about the use of the World War II sirens, apart from the addition of new sounds while the population of Venice more than halved. Decades later, it was morning, and the sirens, which told us that a higher tide was arriving to flood Venice, sounded with some new elements. At first, the loud whistle that had been used during the Second World War before aerial attacks, which was followed by musical notes in the K of E, each one representing 10 centimeters of water above the road level. 
To go to St. Mark's Square to collect a new passport, always thinking that one morning I might leave Venice, I had to wear Wellingtons. Once upon a time the floods were only experiencing winter. Now they were happening during other season too. One of my sons, Pierangelo, was the same age as I had been at the time of the great flood. As we put on our boots and went out into the street, he seemed to experience the same feeling that I had once had. In the entrance of the house, the water had risen up the steps to floor level, while the neighboring campo with the church which had run out of the candles in 1966, was half flooded. Dressed in his little green boots, with eyes and mouth wide as a frog, he immediately sped off of his new skateboard to splash around like a motorboat. By chance, he had discovered his new favorite game and had no intention on giving it up. With difficulty, and after a noisy tantrum, I managed to get him to come with me. When we got close to the Rialto Bridge, his eyes lit up. The streets and squares no longer existed. The waters had once again swallowed everything. The south wind had grown stronger and the water level had risen higher than anticipated, with only boats and buildings breaking the surface. He was desperate to explore, so I held him tightly by the hand and we walked on. By now the water had risen over the tops of my boots and his were already full, but he didn't even notice. Just as I was at his age, he seemed to be in heaven.'